me start off with Thanks, Amazon, Shirley. the sort of cautious optimism tone. Were you satisfied with these numbers and with the outlook? Yeah, I mean, look, you know, the big, I mean, obviously retail was a big question. They had a prime day that they could incorporate into the retail sales. So there was an expectation that that would be good. All eyes, frankly, were on AWS because, you know, what we saw, Microsoft did better than expected with Azure. Google did worse than expected with Google Cloud. So then the big question was, well, what would Amazon do? Well, they kind of come in right in the middle there. Um, you know, they had growth rates at 12%, which was a little bit below what the street wanted, but we're talking tenths of a percent, but similar to what they had last quarter. And remember, that's on a very big number. So the truth of it is, I think what we're seeing and why we're seeing a bit of a turnaround uh, on the market is people are recognizing, hey, these tech stocks are actually doing well, which is a reflection of business investment because this is all enterprise-based business. So to me, that's a sign of overall business strength uh, and confidence to make investments in cloud-based computing and all these other things. So, And then, of course, on the consumer side for Amazon, the, the flip side, people are buying things. And, and we'll see what happens. Like you said, they were a little bit more cautious on their outlook than Intel was, uh, but still, it was, a, it was a pretty good story. So for AWS, for cloud, do you think that's bottomed out? I mean, look, I think what we're going to see, obviously, I think the growth rates are going to be difficult to maintain as this market gets bigger and bigger. But I think what we're starting to see is the beginnings of the generative AI, generative AI impact on all these cloud-based companies. Microsoft talked about it. Uh, AWS talked about it in their earnings as well. Uh, they have this bedrock technology. That's their big story on generative AI. They talked about all the different companies uh, that they were working with on doing generative AI workloads in AWS. So I think we're going to see some growth from this generative AI thing well into 2024. How that trend translates you know, directly into the numbers for Amazon it gets, as it gets bigger and bigger in terms of growth rates, that's a little bit harder to say. But I think there's no question that that sense of caution that we had for a while has gone away. There's a lot of strength in the cloud, companies making these investments, and then, of course, the generative AI uh, upwind as well that I think is going to drive a lot of growth uh, into 24. Um, Intel sort of playing catch up when it comes to uh, Nvidia, when it comes for, for the AI side, right? But you are encouraged by at least this early stage turnaround in the PC market. Absolutely. I mean, you know, the thing with Intel, everybody looks at basically the PC market, the server market, and now increasingly their foundry business. And look, let's, you know, let's remember this was the seventh consecutive quarter of a revenue decline, but it beat expectations, right? And they beat a top line, bottom line. They beat on gross margins. They beat on their forecast. So, there's this sense of, yes, it's starting to turn around. Uh, the PC market numbers uh, were better than expected and also kind of were in line with what Microsoft said about Windows. So it feels like, yes, PC momentum is starting to come back, again, driven by AI-powered PCs. The server business, particularly from your traditional server guys, the Dells, the HPs, the Lenovo's of the world, was also strong. Again, that's a reflection of companies investing in their own data centers. And the company said, hey, we have three different foundry companies. Unfortunately, they didn't say who. That would have been nice to know, of course. But they've got three companies who've committed to their foundry uh, business, uh, big ticket companies directly. Um, and they said they're on track still with the evolution of uh, you know, having these five different nodes in four years. And that's there's a big question mark on the execution capability of that, and they seem to be sticking to it. And so as things come around, I think that's definitely encouraging for Intel. Certainly, they seem to be, you know, past the worst of it, for sure. You know, earliest adopter when it comes to AI is obviously key here, but I feel like this earnings season, there's been a lot of focus on just how much capital spending there continues to be on AI, right? Are investors starting to be less patient about wanting to see the payoff? Uh, you know, it's a good question. I mean, I think we are going to see a lot of experiments in, in terms of how much AI can deliver to the bottom line, because right now it is absolutely capital intensive. There's a lot of money being spent. You know, NVIDIA is making and is selling as many GPUs as they can. Intel is selling a lot of CPUs. Remember, it's easy to for, forget that those systems that uh, have the NVIDIA GPUs typically also have Intel CPUs in them. So there is a little bit of a hand in glove kind of thing that's happening there. Now, NVIDIA has some things moving forward that are a little bit less Intel dependent, but right now there's still a lot of that. So, um, 
there's that's why Intel, I think, is benefiting from that. But back to your question, I think we're going to see at some point, yes, in 2024, people are going to say, all right, look, you're spending all this money. Where's the actual payoff? Because there are a lot of questions like, are people going to be willing to pay, for example, Microsoft charging $30 a person a month for the generative AI version of Office? Similar things from Google with Workspace. Where's the payoff going to be from other large companies making these investments? So that's going to be a big question in 24. I think for now we're okay and probably in Q4, but 24 is really where the rubber hits the road in terms of earnings expectations from these AI investments. Yeah, and it does feel like, uh, you know, earnings this time, even as we do expect the kind of economically sensitive tech stocks to perhaps be a little bit weaker, the, the expectations are higher, right? I wanted to end on China. Out of all of the tech names that you do cover, where do you see uh, the most protection from the ongoing slowdown in China? And where are you going to see the biggest risk? Is it Apple? Well, I mean, Apple is a big question mark, but you know, every time somebody says, oh, Apple's gonna start to fail in China or they're gonna have challenges here, they always seem to magically defy expectations. So logically you would say, yes, Apple seems to be a little bit of a risk at China, but, and yet, you know, the brand is so strong there that I think there is this sense amongst Chinese consumers that they want to continue having Apple. It's obviously, you know, the luxury, we've all talked about this before, you know, the brand people like to be associated with. Um, so I think they are at risk, but I've yet to see anybody really win by betting against Apple, to be honest with you. So we'll see. I think, you know, other challenges are going to be on the higher end of the NVIDIA and Intel chips that are being limited for AI. Hmm. Uh, those become a little bit of a question mark there, but people have kind of been building that into their models and forecasts, I think, for a while. So I'm not sure it's going to have a dramatic impact in the near term.